Hi there. My name is John, and I'm coming to you from Souk, British Columbia in Canada, and today I will be discussing the amplitude envelope on sound synthesizers generally, using the VST plugin Synth1 to illustrate several different amplitude envelope configurations. I will also include a discussion of possible musical contexts within which you would use each configuration. For this lesson, I have opened up an instance of Synth 1 in Cakewalk Sonar 8 Producer Edition. I have created a simple MIDI sequence consisting of a full note, a half note, and a 30-second note. I have also opened an instance of Ozillo's Megascope so that we can see the variation in amplitude on screen. The amplitude envelope changes the output level of the signal over time. In Synth 1, the values range between 0 and 127, so we will use a similar range to represent amplitude on our diagram. The amplitude envelope is activated by the triggering of a musical note, and it normally consists of four values, the attack time, the decay time, the sustain level, and the release time, which is triggered when the note ends, usually by letting go of the key on the keyboard. Abbreviated, these four controls spell out ADSR, and you will often see these letters on a synthesizer. So let's go through what these four controls mean in more detail. The attack time is the amount of time it takes for the sound to go from zero to full volume after a note is triggered. Since it is a measure of time, a smaller value represents a quicker attack, and a larger value represents a slower attack. The sustain level is the amplitude the signal will remain at if the key continues to be held for a longer duration of time. On synth 1, a sustain of 127 means stay at full volume, and 0 means drop to silence. Before the sound settles at the sustain level, however, there can be a period of time during which the sound drops back down from full volume to the sustain level. This is the decay time, which on synth 1 can range from 0, almost instantaneous, to 127 which is very long. When you let go of the key, the release phase kicks in. This is true whether the attack and decay times have elapsed or not. The release time is how quickly the sound fades from its current level to zero. Now for the examples. The switch is a fast attack, full sustain, fast release envelope, which you would use to emulate an organ sound. Note that values of zero for attack and release would result in an audible click at the begin and end of the note, so we've softened those values a bit. The damped percussive envelope is a fast attack, zero sustain, fast release envelope, which you would use to emulate a piano sound. One important feature here is that if you release the note before the decay time is complete, it will dampen or cut off quickly. The percussive envelope is again a fast attack, zero sustain envelope, but in this case the release time matches the decay time. Using this envelope it does not matter whether the note is released before or after the decay time is complete, it will still sound the same. You would use this envelope to emulate a plucked guitar. The sustaining envelope has a fast attack, a sustain somewhere between 0 and 127, and a decay time in the mid-range. The release time is usually short, particularly if you are using this envelope to emulate a blown or bowed instrument. Loudon's quirk envelope has a fast attack, zero sustain, a short to mid decay time, and a long release. The quirk in this envelope is that if you hold the note for a long time, you get a short percussive sound, but if you let go of the note very quickly, you get a long ringing tone. This could be used to interesting effect in an arpeggiated electronic dance mix, but offhand I can't think of any real-world equivalents. <laughs> 